I know it's already March and I just realized I forgot to release my video on my top automation trends for 2022. First one is performance testing. All right, so you're probably thinking performance testing. What does this have to do with automation testing? Well, something is definitely going on here. In 2021, many firms acquired performance testing tool companies to add to their offerings of services. And I've always considered acquisitions to be a key indicator of changes that are going on in our industry. So if many companies are investing in some area, I feel like we should be definitely paying attention to as well as testers. So take a look at the 2021 acquisitions that went on. Tricentis acquired Neotis, Grafana acquired K6, and Perfecto acquired Blaze Meter. So in their press release, Mark Ties, the CEO and president of Perforce, said that with Perfecto, our presence in SaaS and now Blaze Meter, Perfecto can now continually solve the most challenging quality challenges and DevOps for our global customer base. So why am I pointing this out? Because Mark's statement implies the need for full pipeline automation beyond just functional testing, including activities like security, accessibility testing, and performance testing. This also helps validate my predictions I made in 2020 for 2021, in which I said 2021 will be an evolution away from automation scripts to automation pipelines and continuous testing. So if you're not currently doing any performance testing, you will be in 2022. My next prediction is the rise of cloud native testing. So last year, I pointed out how cloud spending rose 37% to 29 billion in 2020 and will continue to rise into 2022. And according to PwC, the trend is likely to persist as the departure of virtual workers underscore the urgency for scalable, secure, reliable, cost-effective, and off-premise technology services. They go on to say that despite the acceleration of cloud adoption across the business landscape, most companies are barely scratching the surface of the cloud's vast potential. And according to the same survey, C-level leaders in the United States revealed in 2021 that 53% of companies have yet to actually reap the substantial values from their cloud investments. So there's ample opportunity in the space right now. And with the opportunity, however, comes a lot of testing challenges. For example, although many companies have leveraged third-party services like AWS, there's some considerable vulnerabilities and relying on things outside of our control. And in the last month of 2021, AWS went down a few times, causing significant outages for companies like Hulu, Netflix, and Twitch. And as a result, companies are seeing more upticks in team focusing on how to test and plan for these type of events. And do you know that on average, an application touches more than 50 external dependencies? How do you test this? That's why cloud-native testing is going to become even more important in 2022. And that leads me to my third prediction that external testing tools to help you test Third-party dependencies will be on the rise in 2022. So we all know how firms rely heavily on continuous integration and continuous delivery pipelines for building, testing, and deploying applications. A smooth build promotion strategy involves an automation strategy with a real-life environment at each phase. So there's some tooling you can use to become more familiar with this year to help you with these user cases. So first one is test containers. If you haven't used it or seen it already, test containers library allows you to use Docker containers within your tests. So it provides external dependencies and distributed cloud architectures like cloud layers, stream processes like Kafka, Pulsar, even Selenium, AWS Mox, local stack, any Docker image or any application defined in Docker composed file contained within your tests. Using test containers, it will spin up the required Docker container. And this will help you test all kinds of third party dependencies that you don't necessarily have control of within your application in your different environments. The other one is local stack. Local stack provides an easy to use test mocking framework for developing cloud applications. And it helps you spin up test applications on your local machine that provides the same functionality and APIs as a real AWS cloud environment. This means you can run your Lambda functions, store data to dynamic DB tables, you can feed events, you can put your application behind your app API firewall. Uh, there's a bunch of other things. All of this happens on your local machine without even touching the cloud. So these are just a few examples of tooling I think we're gonna see even more of in 2022. So definitely keep your eye out as well for these. So I think a lot of these trends also point for the need for resilience testing. And that's why I'm pointing out resilience testing as my trend number four. And I speak to a lot of people on my podcast. So I spoke to Michael Sage, who works at Gremlin. And he said, when doing performance testing, we as testers are usually accustomed to exercising our application based on the traffic 
we're sending to it. So you test to see how the application responds to a particular load profile, or maybe a soak test over many days or a stress test. These are more traditional type performance testing that you might be familiar with. But with the resilience testing, you can actually introduce faults or inject failure modes to further understand how your application responds to that kind of stress, which is sometimes out of our control with all the cloud, third-party services. How do we test for it? Well, one way is definitely resilience testing. It's not solely about requests and response timings or the metrics you're collecting. It's more about understanding what happens when a condition in your application changes. And because you're relying on third-party applications that are no longer under control, you need to stop playing for things that you have no control over. So this technique allows you to create conditions that help you further understand how stress and load affect your application in a cloud-native, third-party kind of world that we find ourselves in. So with more and more teams and software relying on consuming third-party services, third-party libraries, I think 2022 is also going to see a rise in API testing or the need for API security testing. So APIs have quickly become the fundamental building blocks of software that we built today, with microservices dominating the way people usually develop software or modern software. And they're used by developers in every industry and country across the globe. So with more organizations moving to the cloud and the increase in cloud microservices, 2022 will be more and more an API-first world. And an API-first world is going to require API tooling techniques that can enable more people to do API testing beyond functional testing. I've been talking about the rise of API functional testing since 2014, but now it's really expanded to cover all types of API non-functional testing. And so one place to start is definitely API security testing. And while we're talking about API security testing and APIs, another trend I've been seeing is observability. So I think observability and API observability is definitely going to be a growth area in 2022 as well. And because of this, I think we'll see a number of firms coming out with solutions in 2022 to help specifically with how to test API observability. For example, SpeedScale just made available a free API observability desktop tool called CLI. And so seeing tools like this enter the market really jibes with something else I've been noticing, numerous businesses buying performance testing companies. And so the trend now on performance is not traditional server-side performance. The focus is now on front-end user experience performance and observability plays into the space perfectly. So see a rise in more API observability tools or the need for testing in this area as well. All right, here's a big one. The test automation pyramid is obsolete. I had a really exciting conversation with Goiko Adzik on a recent Test Guild Automation podcast. We discussed the fact that with the growth of the cloud, it's really more and more infrequent to see an application that is an isolated island, that it's on its own and doesn't work with anything else on the internet. And as soon as we start using internet services, third-party services within our application, we start relying on changes that other companies might make without our involvement at all. And things like the testing pyramid was pretty much amazing for an age where everything was under our control, right? It's no longer under our control. But now in the cloud API first world, significant components of risk occur after deployment and happens without any influence or control from the people working on a specific piece of software. So I think it needs to start changing how we're going to actually approach this with our testing effort. You need to be able to de-risk things much more effectively. And this is where testing small isolated units of code and focusing on the speed of isolation testing doesn't bring as many benefits because these things happen when it's highly integrated and deployable in production. So what kind of testing will potentially replace these types of testing pyramid activities? I'm not saying these testing activities are going to go away. I just think that you need to stop focusing on other types of activities. I don't focus so much on things that are in our control since we're now relying on all these other third-party influences. So one thing you could start doing is visual validation testing. So there are a bunch of services for this now. Uh, in the vendor space, probably Apply Tools is most well known for it. There's other tools as well. Uh, but in the open source space, there's actually a few that can help you also. The first one is Appraise. And their main NPM command line tool for Appraise is a painless visual test automation approach. And this is what actually Goiko uses. And there's also a newer open source tool called, it's called Visual Regression Tracker has a lot of functionality and a lot of people are raving about this, especially since it's an open source technology. My eighth prediction is what are the top testing programming languages that are gonna be hot in 2022? All right, so in 2022, I've seen a few sites that track the popularity of languages in 2021, and many of them have them listed in a similar order. So the order is, number one is Python, number two is Java. So if you're gonna learn a programming language, 
I would focus in on number one, Python or two, Java. But you might be asking, this is what developers are saying are the languages that are most popular. How does this really jive with what employers want from say an SDAT or a tester? So just for fun, I took a bunch of job descriptions of test engineers at some of the top Silicon Valley companies. Then I created a word cloud to find out if there was any correlation between popular programming languages and the skills companies are looking for when they're posting job openings for testers. And as you can see, what bubble up was Python, Java, and, uh, and also JavaScript, which I don't have highlighted here. But what about AI? Well, you may be surprised with my prediction about AI. It's not necessarily what you're thinking about when you hear about AI and automation testing. I think the biggest benefit we're going to see in 2022 in the investment is AI-assisted automation. So it's not replacing you. It's not a codeless type of technology. It's a person and a computer and an algorithm working together to come up with the best solution uh, using AI to help assist you create code for your automation. So last year, I talked about how AI-based software assistance would be a trend in 2021. And dang, I was spot on. This was before the release of GitHub Copilot. So GitHub Copilot was released after this prediction I made, and it actually helps you convert comments to code. And it's really cool because it's done by typing a comment description, the logic you want, and letting GitHub Copilot assemble the code for you automatically. But one of the cool functions is it actually can import a test package, and then Copilot will suggest, as you're writing code, tests that match your implementation code. So it has your developers covered, but how can it help you with functional automation testing? Can it? Absolutely. So here's an example early on of Kobe Fayok demoing GitHub Copilot with Apply Tools when it first came out. And this isn't just an anomaly. I'm seeing more and more tools do this. I learned of another tool that helps create AI-driven unit tests called DiffBlue. So I think we'll be seeing even more AI-assisted testing tools in 2022 and beyond. My 10th prediction is the rise of automation beyond just testers and developers. So to me, there's two specific things that point to why we'll be hearing much more about codeless automation testing solutions in 2022. First, no matter how big they are, most large companies still have their own in-house development environment. Also, most of these backend systems are built using a node code solution like, say, Salesforce, SAP, Oracle, et cetera. And the scary part is most of these systems are mission critical and usually are ignored by testers and developers. And so business users are generally using these systems today, yet they don't have the developer skills needed to code up automation. The second thing I saw numerous times were articles on how demand for IT contractors was at its highest level since 1998. And what really caught my attention was when I dug into these reports, the skills that were in short supply were, guess what? Automation testing. So you have a bigger need, a bigger pool of applications that need to be tested by people that don't necessarily have testing skills. And on the other hand, you have people they need demand for automation with people with programming skills, but there's no one to fill those roles. So these two options leave many companies in a tough spot. So how can you accelerate automation as we try to shift left, shift right with CI, CD in software development life cycles, releasing faster, more frequently without a workforce with the coding skills needed for automation? So enter codeless testing tools. So another key indicator is acquisitions. And so in 2021 of February, Sauce Labs acquired Atomic IQ. And guess what this tool helps you with? You got it. Codeless automation with a focus on package-based automation for solutions like Salesforce. And in the press release, Sauce actually said small, low-code applications have become increasingly common in the enterprise driven by the surge in the prevalence of SaaS business applications. So because of all these reasons, I think Expect to see more vendors coming out with new solutions or features in this area in 2022 around codeless test automation. And I don't think I could have any predictions around automation in any year without mentioning Selenium, but you may be surprised by this one. So over the past few years, I've seen the number of testers moving from Selenium to another test tool like Cypress and Playwright. Obviously with each tool, each tool has its own pros and cons. And the knock on Selenium was that it lacked many modern features that these newer solutions provided. Well, Selenium 4 was released in the last quarter of 2021, which includes many of the features that folks have been waiting for and that a lot of people had jumped ship to use these other tools because they weren't able to get this functionality within Selenium. And to learn more about what those features are, definitely check out our free online mini course with Simon Stewart, who covers all the new features of Selenium 4 that's going to get quickly running in 2022 with these new features to bring your Selenium up to the 20. 20- 22 standards.
So will 2022 be the year that Selenium fights to regain its browser automation crown? Stay tuned and find out. So those are my top 11 automation testing trends for 2022. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you haven't already, I highly recommend you subscribe and hit that bell button every time I release a new video. As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers.